Item number 2254 Level 3 Confidential Containment Class Euclid Disruption Class Kinect Risk Class Caution Special Containment Procedures SCP-2254 is contained within the town of Fallon, Alabama. While SCP-2254's incorporeal nature has made it difficult to house in any long-term containment vessel, SCP-2254's isolation within Fallon has been deemed an acceptable amount of exposure in exchange for sustained containment of the entity. Foundation agents embedded within local law enforcement are to identify anomalous pregnancies that result from involvement by SCP-2254, and introduce an acceptable level of both mupropristone and prostaglandin into the affected subject's drinking water in order to induce miscarriage. As not all pregnancies resulting from SCP-2254's involvement are anomalous. Due to this protocol, the rate of SCP-2254-1 manifestation has significantly decreased since SCP-2254's discovery. The continued implementation of the Black Tuesday Protocol is imperative to the ongoing containment of SCP-2254. Updated Containment Memorandum Per Foundation Protocol 2515.99, the ongoing containment of SCP-2254 has been transferred to the jurisdiction of Project Paragon. All other extant containment procedures remain in place. SCP-2254 is a hostile, massive, incorporeal entity contained within the town of Fallon, Alabama. SCP-2254 is invisible to the naked eye and can only be viewed using infrared cameras. SCP-2254's form is that of a wildly distorted humanoid, roughly 12.8 meters in height, with extremely distended arms and six legs, a misshapen neck and face, thick shoulder-length hair, and severely disfigured genitals. Two legs appear to protrude from the upper back, while another two protrude from the lower back, just above the tailbone forcing SCP-2254 to walk in an awkward, scuttling motion. In place of what would seem to be male genitalia is a seeping mass of pustulous lesions, capable of extending out from the main body of the entity. The function of this behavior is unknown. SCP-2254's genitals appear to be otherwise ineffective, and serve to do little more than impede its progress as it moves. SCP-2254's skin is dark and mottled, and aside from six eyes arranged in two vertical columns of three per side, SCP-2254's face is otherwise featureless, lacking a nose or a mouth. SCP-2254's single other defining characteristic is the pictogram of the letter J above a heart that seems to have been branded into its forehead. SCP-2254 is seemingly capable of influencing human decision-making by altering cognition and manipulating young humans, typically under the age of 20, and the population who would not otherwise be driven to do so. This manifests as a reported dream state, wherein affected individuals are brought together semi-unconsciously to perform sexual intercourse while in a state of elevated suggestiveness and arousal. Notably, arousal as a result of SCP-2254 influence is not accompanied by elevated hormonal levels leading researchers to believe this state is wholly fabricated by SCP-2254's influence, and not the product of actual biological responses. These unions will generally always end in insemination, though SCP-2254's influence can be disturbed by the application of lacrimator agents, such as tear gas or ammonia inhalants. Subjects brought out of SCP-2254's influence during the act of copulation usually express some confusion and hostility towards the source of the disturbance, which abates over time. Afflicted subjects will also not express any kind of regret about the sexual union in question, though whether this is also the nature of SCP-2254's influence is currently unknown. SCP-2254 generally manifests at the Little Rock Canyon Falls near Fallon, though not in any regular pattern. It is believed that SCP-2254 is more likely to manifest on nights where there are more age-appropriate targets freely available to interact with each other sexually, though this has not been confirmed. After manifestation, 
SCP-2254 will stalk towards any gathering of targets, potentially persuading targets in its path to move towards other targets in an attempt to influence more subjects into engaging in sexual intercourse. Once at least one pairing of targets have come together in one place and begun interacting sexually, SCP-2254 will lower its face to be level with the pair or group and will stare, unblinking, until the act is finished. On the rare occasion the insemination does not occur, SCP-2254 will linger above the pairing for a period of time, during which the couple will interact very little. After a certain amount of time, SCP-2254 will lower its face again and the sexual act will begin again. There have been no instances of insemination not occurring during the second instance. While the odds of conception through this manner are no different than usual, there is a significant chance, greater than 68%, that the mother will become pregnant with an anomalous fetus classified as an SCP-2254-1 instance. Subjects who become anomalously pregnant as a result of SCP-2254's influence will experience the rapid growth of the SCP-2254-1 fetal structure, which will quickly take on non-human characteristics. These fetuses do not fully match either parent in genetic makeup, and instead more closely resemble a hypothetical protohuman or early human ancestor, with many of the same deformed characteristics of SCP-2254. As they develop, SCP-2254-1 instances will take increasingly more resources away from their mothers, starving them to encourage their own expedited growth. Despite this, SCP-2254-1 instances negatively affect the cognition of their birth mother, who will become passionately defensive of the SCP-2254-1 instance, even as it devours her from the inside out. SCP-2254-1 instances generally do not kill their host mother before birthing themselves, though they do cause a significant amount of damage during their birthing that can lead to the mother's death by exsanguination from the vaginal canal. Despite a gestation and birthing process that leaves the mother exhausted and extremely malnourished, affected mothers are generally unable to recognize the anomalous nature of SCP-2254-1 instances and will care for them as if they were normal human newborns, including breastfeeding them. SCP-2254-1 instances are extremely sexually violent and will attempt to rape, maim, and consume any living creature that disturbs them when they are with their mother. Mothers will generally continue to breastfeed the SCP-2254-1 instances, usually two or three are born at a time, until they either expire, typically from severe malnutrition or cardiac arrest, or reach maturity. In the event of their mother's death, SCP-2254-1 instances will consume the corpse and then disappear into any available nearby sheltered area, including abandoned buildings, forests, scrapyards, etc. Uncontained SCP-2254-1 instances are believed to be the cause of no fewer than 30 reported sexually explicit deaths over the last 15 years. Addendum 2254.1 Discovery SCP-2254 was discovered after an amateur photographer from Fort Payne, Alabama accidentally captured footage of SCP-2254 through an infrared camera lens. Foundation assets quickly secured a perimeter around the town, after which a four-month period of research and investigation began. It was determined that SCP-2254 was not containable by typical methods, and after SCP-2254 was followed to Birmingham, Alabama, to follow a local of the town who had recently moved to the city. Programs were implemented to discourage movement of affected persons out of Fallon. More information about this can be found in Addendum 2254.2. Addendum 2254.2 Black Tuesday Protocol The Black Tuesday Protocol was established to purposefully and effectively depress the local economy of Fallon, Alabama, in order to retain the local population and control exposure to SCP-2254. The Black Tuesday Protocol is built on five core tenets. 1. Reduce spending at the state level to local schools and other educational programs. 2. 
reduce exposure to media that glamorizes or glorifies urban living. 3. Increase exposure to heroin and other opiates. 4. Decrease the price of alcohol and tobacco. 5. Enforce a family-first doctrine founded in evangelical Christianity that prioritizes a family structure wherein older members of the family are relied upon for child care, while younger members are free to continue procreation. The Black Tuesday Protocol also dictates the ongoing treatment of five women from Fallon who no longer live within the town, and who are visited occasionally by SCP-2254. All these women, ages 16 to 29, are being dosed through their water supply with the aforementioned mix of mifepristone and prostaglandin to inhibit pregnancy. They are unconscious of this treatment, and while their inability to conceive children has taken a marked toll on their mental health, the protocol has significantly diminished their odds to conceive an SCP-2254-1 instance, and has reduced the number of birth instances outside of Fallon to zero. Addendum 2254.3 Interview The following is an interview by Agent LaMiere, posing as an investigative journalist, and a local woman named Kate Barnett. Mrs. Barnett was, notably, twice the subject of anomalous conception due to SCP-2254's influence, the first of which resulted in the birth of two SCP-2254-1 instances, and the second of which was caught and terminated as a result of current containment measures. Begin Log Alright, we're recording. Thanks for taking the time to sit with me, Miss… Oh, that's Kate. Kate Barnett. But my maiden name is Kate Forrest. Perfect. Perfect. So, when I called you on the phone, I had asked about some things that had come up in your medical history. You talking about my babies? Yes. How many kids did you say you had? Well, there's Daniel, and Bub, and the twins, then baby June who passed. I was pregnant with another, but it didn't make it either. Non-anomalous child, still living in Fallon, age 26. Non-anomalous child, lives with his father out of state, age 19. Two SCP-2254-1 instances, both of which reached full maturity and were presumed destroyed after Mobile Task Force Alpha-44 Big Game Hunters raided an SCP-2254-1 nest, killing several of the instances. Non-anomalous infant, died due to complications from SIDS. SCP-2254-1 instance that was terminated as a result of containment protocols. Yeah, that's perfect. Can you tell me about anything unusual you may have noticed with the twins? Something strange about how they were conceived, I mean? You mean about their daddy? He's a good for nothing. We had one stupid drunk night, then I got knocked up and he ran off. Didn't want nothing to do with them. Would have been lost if it weren't for Jack. The father in question is Mason Banks, a welder who lives three doors down from Mrs. Barnett. Jack? Yeah, Jack's about as much daddy as he had. It's good, too, since he's a damn sight better father than Mason ever would have been. Who's Jack? He's… You ever seen something in a dream, and then later you've seen it in real life, and you just know it's the same? That's Jack. He came to me the night Mason got me knocked up, and he's so pretty with that blonde hair in his eyes. He knows how to treat a woman right. I told him that Mason had left, and that I think he had got me pregnant, and Jack said not to worry about it, that he'd be there to take care of things. How did you know you were pregnant? Oh, that's just Mother's intuition. Sometimes you just know, and I knew, and Jack knew too. But he told me everything was going to be alright, and that he'd take care of my babies. I see. How long have you known Jack? Well, ever since I was little, I guess. Maybe since while well, well, ever since I was little, I guess. Maybe since when I was in the ninth grade, when Daniel was born. Jack was there then. He didn't say much then, just that I was a special girl, and that he was going to be around for a while. He wasn't around much when Dan was growing up, but he was when the twins were born, and then again when I had the miscarriage. God, he was so sad about that. I cried and cried and he just held my hand and said, there, there, that's alright, 
You're still my special girl. Mmm, I don't think so. I think just about all girls around here know Jack. He's just so supportive, you know? Like, it's like he knows what it's like to want to be a mother, and he's just there to make it alright. To some of them, though, you know, he's just Jack, but <laughs> between you and me, he's my Jack. I see. Anything else you have to add? I don't think so. Hey, you seem to know all about this. You ever seen Jack's brothers? Brothers? Yeah, I think they're all named Jack. They're just each sort of different. Jack is scared of them. I am too, but I ain't ever seen them. Just the way he talks about them, you know they're bad. Bad? Bad how? I don't know. I just know that Jack is always smiling, except when he talks about his brothers. Then he's not smiling much at all. End log.